Welcome to the White Mountains in New Hampshire. It's my best New Hamp New Hampshire. Nah Hampshire. Nah Hampshire. <laughs> We're here in the White Mountains in New Hampshire. We'll be spending three days out here backpacking. It should be absolutely stunning. So yeah, with that, let's uh, hit the trail. Woo. This is my show, gosh darn. Oh, wow, starting strong. The hike that we're doing today is eight miles into our tent site at 13 Falls. 13 Falls is supposed to be really beautiful. There's swimming holes. And for Tucker, who's with us, Rainer's dog, this is actually his first ever backpacking trip. Tucker is a 12-year-old Jindo. He is like a super happy and super active dog, but he's never done anything like this before. And so we wanted to pick something that's gonna be like a little bit more accessible for him. It is a bear area though, so exercise caution, y'all. Look at this mushroom! Oh my gosh, it's a little plate! Well, you put your put your 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 trinkets in there. What trinkets would you put in there? Like beans. Beans? <laughs> little dry beans. What? What do you mean? <laughs> So you put like little dry beans in there. I don't know, or like rings. I don't know, what are people, what are trinkets? What are you Pennies, rings, coins, stamps. We've made it like 0.1 of a mile. We've actually gone uh, 0.34 of a mile, so. <laughs> We've already gotten to dry beans level weirdness. That's usually like a day two thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is so stunning. I freaking love the White Mountains. They're so cool. Isn't this nice? Oh my God, look at this. Look at this little offshoot to the water. Holy guacamole. Woo woo. I love a game. All right, so there's this sign. It says, how many paces is 200 feet? We are in bear country, or in like bear territory. And you're supposed to store your food and your cooking stuff 200 feet from where you camp and downwind. So this is gonna basically mark our starting point and then we'll count our steps until we get to the other sign that is 200 feet down the trail and that'll tell us how far we have to walk away from camp. Here we go. One, two, three, four, 10, 11, 12, 13, 8, 9, 80, 1, 5, 6. 86 paces is 200 feet for me. That's great to know. We got to the junction for Franconia Falls. We're actually not going to Franconia Falls. We're gonna continue on towards the Franconia tent site. And from there, we're gonna branch off to go up to our falls, which is 13 Falls. We've gone about 2.8 miles now. So we still have roughly five miles to go before we get to camp for tonight. But we're making really good time. Oh, look at this bridge. I love this trail. We are crossing into the Pemigewasset Wilderness now, still in the White Mountains National Forest. There's actually a variety of different tent sites along this trail. The White Mountains is maintained by the Appalachian Mountain Club and the tent sites are generally really well maintained. So it'll be a nice spot to stay for the night tonight. Headed into the Pemigewasset Wilderness and we're gonna take our turn off to the left pretty soon here. Oh, this is where the up begins. You ready, Boobaloo? Ooh, an obstacle. <laughs> We got some people coming, Rainer. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I know you. Oh. <laughs> I was literally just telling her, I was like, have you been following Miranda's road trip? The line goes to like New England. And we're like, is she coming to Mass? Is she coming to the White? What were your names? I'm Anna. I'm Megan. I'm a little starstruck. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Can I take a selfie? Would that be okay? Yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> oh, oh, this is perfect. Well, sweet. Well, so nice to meet both of you. Yeah, Thanks for saying you hi. Too. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're like my hero. Oh, thank no, you. I'm serious. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Well, this is really cool to, to run into you. Yeah. And I hope you have an awesome rest of your trip back. Yeah. <laughs> that was so cool. That was yeah. the best. This is a cool trail. I enjoy this. Narrow, gentle, rolling, mostly flat. It'd be nice to find a spot where we can all like sit, you know what I mean? Mm. I'm gonna make some ramen and some peanut butter and some mushrooms. This is the exact reason why I'll never be an ultralighter. I brought collapsible chopsticks with me in addition to a spork.
Yeah. I am going to drain this water back into my water bottle. Like I can just use the same water to make my dinner tonight. Okay. Shit. Wow, amazing, Miranda. What a thing to do. Oh wow, I do have a blister though. Wow, that seemed like such a good idea. It's only the top layer of skin, it's probably fine. Of course it's f***ing on a backpacking trip. We're filming. God <laughs> Lunch. <laughs> Okie dokie. I stupidly don't have burn cream in my first aid kit. It's just one of those things that I didn't think I would ever need. And now I really, really wish I did, but I put some antiseptic and antibiotic ointment on there and some gauze over it. Uh, I'm gonna keep hiking though, cause I think I can. Wow, I feel so dumb. I just can't believe that that happened. I'm in pain, for sure. But I think I'm okay. Franconia Brook Trail. What's that, what's her name, Mrs. Wonder Bread? McGonagall. What did you just say? Miranda just tried to call Miss, tried to name Mrs. McGonagall from Harry Potter and start and say, what was her name? Mrs. Wonder Bread? <laughs> okay, get out of here. It's my show. Mrs. Bye. <laughs> Mr. Potter, 10 points separate to Gryffindor. <laughs> for, for making the, the softest sandwich bread, <laughs> the best vehicle for which to deliver peanut butter and jelly. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go on the Franconia Brook Trail. We should be like three and a half miles from our tent site. Kurube. Let's go. Also, we heard a bear. Great. Look, the thing is, I didn't actually think her name was Mrs. Wonderbread. It's just sometimes you have to say the thing in your brain out loud to make room for the right answer. Look, we're gonna get to a place where we see things. Wow, have you considered quitting the show to be a tour guide? <laughs> Ooh, cool! A bog! This is a pond. Is this a pond? What really is a bog? It's just more like a, a swamp, maybe. Swamp, yeah. But wait, isn't a bog and a swamp the same thing? Okay, actually, I would love to know the difference between a bog, a swamp, a pond, a lake. Yay, boggy pond! The name's Bond. Bog Pond. <laughs> We're getting to that part of the backpack. We are getting to that part. This is so beautiful. Oh, look at the little tiny yellow mushroom. You're not gonna survive there very much longer. Someone's gonna stomp on you. Don't eat it. No! <laughs> no! Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Look at your little blanket. <laughs> We're not friends anymore. <laughs> Look at this little pond. Now this, this is a pond. God <laughs> Look at this perfect fairy divot of little plants. This is just perfect divot plant life right here. Magic creatures have homed themselves there. Don't let Tucker over there, he'll kill all of them. Wow, this is beautiful. I love this. Ooh, what the f This is um disgusting. This is a bog. Wow, what the frick is this stuff? It looks like scoby. Who wants kombucha? <laughs> In charge of filming now. Whip to bog. Whip to people. Whip to ground. Whip to dog. Whip to shoots. I'm done. Let's go. I'm just gonna say it. I uh, I'm in pain. My foot hurts, and I wish that I hadn't accidentally spilled water on it. That was hot. But this is incredible. This is really gorgeous, and I'm uh, I'm stoked to get to camp and take my sock off and 
put more neosporin on my foot. Wow, look at this moldy mushroom. It's got that like hairy little tip to it. It's got like the hairy stalk. Never mind. Look at this. I wonder if this is falls one, two, and three. This is one thing I love about trails like this that are like winding through brooks and streams. So you're just like constantly surrounded by beautiful sounds. I love it. So we just entered the 13 Falls tent site area. The interesting thing about the White Mountains is that there is no dispersed camping in this area at least. So that means that you can only camp within specific camp zones. This helps to like mitigate the amount of impact that we have on the campsites by basically just like putting everybody in one spot and then we can keep the rest of the forest a little bit more uh, protected. We um, have to check in with the campsite manager once we get in there. It's about five o'clock now and I'm already ready for dinner. <laughs> like I said at the beginning of this video, this is Tucker's first backpacking trip. And so far he's done super well today, but I feel like he is probably really tired. I'm looking forward to like seeing him kind of cozy in at camp because I know he loves camping. Great, let's go. Woo woo. Oh, I do love backpacking. Just something so pleasant about carrying your life on your back. Oh, wow! You can see the waterfall, like just through the trees. Oh my gosh, gorgeous, wow, oh! That is where you will find me tomorrow, is in that swimming hole. Let's go uh, snag ourselves a camp spot. We just made it here to our campsite at 13 Falls. Tucker is all set up. <laughs> Dude, he is so tuckered out. <gasps> so I set up my camp. Behind me is my new Cedar Summit Alto tent. This is actually my first time ever backpacking with this tent, but I'll give you a quick rundown of the tent, things I like about it, a few things that I don't like about it, tomorrow. So at the beginning of this trail, I said that I was doing a three day backpacking trip here in the whites, but I'm actually spending both nights camping here at this tent site. So tomorrow this will be my base camp and then I'll just get to go explore the area for the full day before coming back here to spend the night and then hiking out the following day. It's not something that I've ever done before, but it is something I've wanted to try. Yeah, I'm looking forward to carrying a lot lighter pack tomorrow getting to check out the falls, the swimming holes, maybe go to one of the 4,000 foot peaks and just kind of like take it easy. Huh? Say good night, Miranda. Good night, Miranda. <laughs> Say good night, buddy. Who's a good boy. He did such a good job today. Oh, you job back to Japan. I kind of got a weird night's sleep last night. I had pretty bad insomnia, but waking up this morning and getting to drink some coffee down by the water and just like enjoy this gorgeous area has been fantastic. The plan for the day today is to do a day hike and maybe to like hang out by the falls for a little while. But before we get started with any of that, I wanted to give you a quick tour of my tent and talk a little bit more about this new tent. This tent is not a freestanding tent. It's a semi freestanding tent. A semi freestanding tent means that you can set the tent up and it will stand on its own, but you won't get all of the volume or the interior space of the tent without using some stakes, which means that basically I have poles that go to the front or back to corners and then I have a singular pole that goes to the middle in the back and then these two pieces of cord here that have to be staked out. We have these huge uh, loops like the the cordelette is really big and so I was actually able to like kind of get a tent stake in and then just stack some rocks in these big loops and create something like really secure. Pretty cool feature. I also really like the way that the rainfly attaches. Like the very first tent that I ever had, the rainfly just had grommets that you would like hook underneath the tent. And like, that's a fine system, but it's not great. For this rainfly, this is my tent, this is the pole, and then this little piece is the rainfly. And this just goes around like that and tightens. While the downside of it would be that 
if that piece were to break, to replace it would be like getting a specific piece from sea to summit, but the likelihood of a piece of metal breaking versus like a plastic buckle breaking is a lot slimmer. I do think it's a pretty cool, easy system and more durable than some of the other tents that I've used in the past. So let me show you on the inside. Sea to summit also created this, what they call a light bar pocket that actually just buckles in to the top of the tent. This material you can see here on the bottom is a light diffusing material. So I can put my headlamp into this pocket and then when the headlamp is on, it creates like almost a lantern effect inside the tent. When this is not up here, this is what stores my tent poles. So I love that. Just like that light bar pocket, Sea to Summit also made the storage sacks for the tent body and the rain fly to double as pockets inside the tent. So this little bag right here is what normally stores the rain fly of my tent. And then it has these little clips and these can essentially allow it to clip into the back corner of my tent. So it gives me a little bit of additional storage. But what that means is that they eliminated some storage inside the tent without these. I have one really narrow pocket here in the back, nothing up front here. If you wanted to cut additional weight from this tent and if you wanted to not carry these bags with you, it's just important to note that then you won't really have a ton of storage inside the tent. Another thing I love about this tent is just the amount of mesh that's on the inside. So when the rain fly is off of the tent, you just have like a ton of interior mesh. The setup of this tent is also super simple. It's a hubbed pole system, which means that all of the poles come out of the bag in just one connected piece, basically. Overall, I'm really impressed with this tent. I really like it a lot. It's really light, it's really spacious. I just love the assembly of it. So yeah, I'm pretty psyched on it, honestly. Hey, the one other thing is that I slept with my bag up clothes last night. I just like wanted something to cuddle. It was actually really effective. So I feel like for anybody else who sleeps with stuffed animals at home, yes, I am 31. Putting all your clothes in a stuff sack and holding it was really nice. Sweet, let's go for a hike. So the plan for today is to hike up to Galehead Hut, which is one of the Appalachian Mountain Club operated huts here in the White Mountains. We'll probably have our lunch up at the hut, hopefully get some really gorgeous views of the White Mountains. It's a beautiful blue sky day, so I'm hoping we're not sucked in when we get up there. And then yeah, after we finish the hike, we're basically coming back here to 13 Falls. Great, but first, hiking. Okay, to Galehead. Wow, I love this. Look at how mossy these rocks are. Okay, ready for some lunch. So we're just rounding the bend here at Galehead Hut. The hike in actually took us a lot longer than I anticipated. It took us uh, a little over two hours to go two and a half miles. I'm gonna pop around the corner here. Oh my gosh. The hut is just to my left here in front of me. And this view behind me is not at all what I expected. Gorgeous. So we just made it to the top of Galehead. We all brought lunch up with us, so we're gonna find a spot to let Tucker lie down and rest, make some food, eat, and enjoy this amazing view. Sweet, I'm hungry. Yeah, me too. I want noodles, not spilled on my foot. Any snacks? The super cool thing about the Galehead Hut is that you can actually stay here in like bunk beds and have like a hot meal cooked for you. If you're interested in backpacking and you don't necessarily want to have to carry your tent or all your gear up, these huts are a really, really cool resource that exists here in the White Mountains for you to like go on a long hike, but then get to stay in a pretty luxurious woodsy cabin. With that, it's time to head back down to the tent site and enjoy the waterfall before making dinner and going to bed. Is this chunky coffee, if you're curious? Yeah, yeah it's not a, it's not great. I'm in charge now. How's everybody? Oh my God. Yay! <laughs> How's the dog? The Miranda cam is... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, that's it. Bye. <laughs> Yay, hiking. Mushroom. This place has cool mushrooms. You do not want to eat that. It will potentially give you a very interesting trip. You will start seeing things. You will start to understand the meaning of the universe. Far too much for a dog to handle. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm having fun. Waterfalls! We just got to the turnoff where we're gonna go over to 13 Falls. I'm not gonna get as much time at the waterfalls as I wanted today, but I'm gonna get at least a, a little bit of relaxation time over there before it's time to cook dinner and go to sleep. this road trip has been it's been a really interesting way for me to spend a summer and something that I've never done before and the biggest thing that I've learned from it is that just like bopping from place to place driving a car around has not given me enough of a chance to immerse myself in all of the many incredible hiking and backpacking areas that exist in the country I feel like this was like a tapas trip well taste of like many different parts of the country but now I want to like do a, a full tasting menu Easily I could have come to the White Mountains and I could have done any of the like blockbuster hikes that are here. And so to come here instead and be like, well, I'm hiking with an elderly dog who's never backpacked before, with a pregnant videographer, and I'm kind of exhausted from two months on the road, what do I want to do? Taking that time to sort of choose something easier and less traveled um, has actually been really perfect. A good reminder to me and to a lot of backpackers that like, you don't have to do something hard and long. That's it. The end. This is gorgeous. Look at this. Mmm, pussy. This whole area at 13 Falls is really stunning. Oh, my baby! I'm gonna fill this with filtered water and go poop. pie breakfast, two packets of instant coffee, and I'm gonna prep my peanut noodles before we hit the trail. We've had kind of like a nice lazy morning. I'm gonna eat some food and kind of like get my bag packed for the day, and then I definitely wanna wander up to the waterfall that we can see behind us. you know, and these incredible traverses of the 4,000 foot peaks. But like in my mind, this is the reason that I backpack and the reason that I hike is to get to places like this. All right, we're gonna grab our stuff and go back to the car and wrap this backpacking trip and this road trip up. Backpack into a waterfall. Everybody's gonna have lots of water. Nobody's getting dehydrated today. Okay, down we go. Yeah! Go 
team. Mm. Mm. Okay. One high five. That's okay. <laughs> oh, my feet are sore, surprisingly. The best feeling. I am back at the car after finishing my backpacking trip here in the White Mountains. This also marks the very end of my summer road trip. So I have driven 5,000 miles across the country and got to do all of these awesome new things from hiking a 14,000 foot mountain in Colorado to attempting kayak camping and bike packing on the CNO Canal and then finishing here in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. For being a backpacker and being like a backpacking and camping channel, I actually haven't done nearly as much backpacking this summer as I was expecting to because of this awesome opportunity to do this road trip. I just packed my summer full of all of these amazing activities and some of them went the way that I wanted them to, but a lot of them didn't at all go the way I expected them to. As fun as it's been to film all these videos where I'm trying out new things, I think the coolest part honestly about this road trip has been getting to meet so many of you. I don't know, you guys are just really great. For the rest of the year, what you can expect is some really cool backpacking trips in the Washington area. And if you're looking for any like specific tips for backpacking, or if you have any big questions about backpacking, please let me know in the comments. So with that, if you liked this video, if you liked the whole series, and if you're excited about what's happening next, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, you hit the like button, and I will see you all in the wild. Bye, happy summer. Happy, happy fall. If you want like a, a visual representation of my brain at the end of this summer road trip, it's this dog. Shout out to Abby behind the camera. Yeah, Abby. Abby. Abby's the best. Shout out to you. We didn't kill each other. Yeah, except that. <laughs> I don't know why I high five you. I'm gonna leave you, I'm gonna go down. <laughs> Great All right, day, guys. let's go. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my mic wasn't rolling. Just kidding. Oh, you <laughs> the, ooh, wow, that was like a little smoke signal that I just put up. Did you see that? Look. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, what? don't film this. <laughs> what are you doing? It like. It's reflecting on your face. Yes. Smoke signal. Whatever.